So I have a question to start off. How many of you are attending your first uh, Deming Institute conference this year? So, wow. So how many have been to five or more? about 10 or more? Many more. Well, what I wanted to do was um, mention that we have somebody in the audience here who's been to every single Deming Institute conference, which started in 1993, I believe. 1994, see she even knows, 1994. You can tell I wasn't there. I was way too young to be there at that point. Um, and she's been at every single one of these. And I can imagine that she's not coming back just to come back. It's about the learning. I'm guessing that you get something out of every single one of these and you come back invig invigorated, ready to move on to the next annual conference coming up. And if she could, I, ho I don't know if you don't mind, could you stand up for just a second, Pat? Pat Clark, every single one. <laughs> and if you don't mind for a minute, if you have any reflection on my grandfather or the conferences or anything like that, we'd love to have you say a couple of words. Thank you. Uh, in the early years, they were two and three a year. Luckily for me, they were in the D.C. area, so I didn't have to commute. I live in D.C. Uh, my first exposure to Dr. Deming was a four-day seminar, and I worked for EDS at the time, which Ross Perot ran, and it was quite, it had quite a culture, and I, I thought, I can't believe, do they know what this guy's telling us? This is really radical. <laughs> I, I was <laughs> so amazed. And then uh, our study group in D.C. was invited to the first conference. I think the first one was invitation only, um, but there were people from all over the world, and we were just tickled to be able to go. Eric Budd was there, and uh, I knew him from EDS. And I find every time I come, like you say, I learn, either learn something new or relearn something in a different way. I've made lots of friends. I've been able to um, meet a lot of people who've worked with your grandfather. Oh, and the first time, then when I went up to Detroit for some training with Eric Budd's group, someone said, do you want to go to a study group meeting? And it's the one that you folks run up in the Detroit area. And so I got to meet Dr. Deming, and I thought, oh, uh, he's meeting 30 or 50 people from the Detroit area, and I'm not from here. So I said, I'm Patricia Clark from Glover Park. And at the end, and at the end of the time, my colleague went up to speak to him, and he said, and that girl, she's from Glover Park, isn't she? <laughs> and it turned out Diana, his mother and her husband, had lived just two doors up from me b well before I lived there, but you know, many years ago. So he knew Glover Park very well. It's a neighborhood. So... Anyway, I've, uh, I really enjoy coming and seeing everyone. So hopefully we'll have some of you back uh, next conference that we have too. So we can build off of that. Uh, what I wanted to do was also take a few moments to extend a couple of thank yous. Um, this conference wouldn't be possible without the help of so many generous individuals and companies. And while there's too many to name, I'd like to recognize a few this morning. Um, as you've seen earlier, we had our conference sponsors, which I mentioned yesterday and talked a little bit about, uh, Bama companies. And Paula Marshall was delayed coming in, so she uh, did not get here till yesterday afternoon. But Paula, if you could raise your hand. Thank you very, very much for all your support. <coughs> and also the ASQ Lansing uh, Jackson Section 1008, thank you guys again. Uh, do appreciate it. And as you saw yesterday, we had a video from the Aquate folks. Uh, and they also did a small tribute, which I'll play at the end. It's about a minute and a half long uh, that I thought you would like. Uh, some of you may have seen this. They reworked it a little bit. Um, but we'll play that at the end. Um, I also want to thank the scholarship donors, uh, Jack Hillerick, I don't think Jack's here right now, and Dick Steele. Uh, thank you very much. My mother, Diana Cahill. And then we also had an anonymous donor for the uh, Michigan Lean Consortium Scholarships. 
So thank you, anonymous donor. We appreciate it. <laughs> if the, uh, would the anonymous donor please raise her, his or her hand? <laughs> I don't see any hands going up here. Uh, also, a special thank you to uh, CQI, uh, especially Dennis and Eric. You guys have been terrific. It's been a lot of fun working with you on this. And like we talked about, we started this four and a half years ago, and, and we're so pleased that it ended up uh, working out. Uh, the conference committee, which they were a part of, uh, met almost monthly in the past year. Uh, they have been so helpful in providing guidance to us and understanding you know, how do we reach out into this marketplace. So thank you all very much for, uh, for participating on that. Um, in the back of the room is a young lady named Darlene Suimatsu. She's, don't play hiding, come on out here. Thank you, Darlene, you have made this amazing how you put this together. Thank you so much. And, and my wife, Judy, who's been uh, taking photos. Now, I'm, you have to go on Facebook and click and like us. W. Edwards Deming Institute. You can tell I'm on Facebook all the time. So you'll see some of these photos up there. Um, one of the things is a pr the speakers, we couldn't do this without you. I'd, we have such a deep appreciation for what you've done and what you put together. I always thought it was amazing to be able to get up and put these type of presentations together. And I think about two years ago, Bill asked me to do a presentation for uh, the n 2 n conference. And it was about an hour, 10 minutes long. And I thought, oh, this will be a piece of cake. I can pop something together here real quick. And about 200 hours later, <laughs> I was thinking, this is incredible what these speakers put together. And I know, Dick Steele, you did the same thing at n 2 n I think, last year. And you, you and I were commiserating. I think we were both in the 200-hour range on putting ours together. So I know what it takes to put these together. And it is uh, incredible and th that you all have the ability to do that and get up here and present that. So thank you all to the speakers very, very much. <laughs> and then lastly, the thanking all of the attendees. Spending this time together and learning with you has been a terrific experience. Yesterday, I was talking with David at the um, Deming Dialogue section. And we were talking about, do we end this now? I mean, we're supposed to end at 5 o'clock here, and it's getting close. And everybody was so engaged in that and talking and learning. And some of the epiphanies coming out of it were just terrific, hearing them up at the front of the room. Right, David? That was a lot of fun to see that going on, that discourse and discussion. And we hope to be able to continue that with our uh, final session at the end of the day today. So thank you all as attendees uh, for, uh, for coming. Um, one of the things that... I wanted to talk about for a few minutes, I know we're running a couple minutes long, we had a little AV problem this morning, um, is to talk a little bit about what the Deming Institute does and why we're here and how it ties into some of the messages and some of the epiphanies and discussions that were going on yesterday. And it revolved around how can we get this message out? Somebody was talking about critical mass and a square root and if you take the 110 people, I was talking to uh, Eric, if you take the 110 people in this room and you reverse that square root, I think it comes out to around 12,100 people that we can all impact if we look at it from that perspective. And we need to do that. And the aim of the Institute is to provide that ever-expanding opportunities for you to learn, for you to engage, for you to partner with us to get my grandfather's ever-increasing important message out. I think we all, if you're first time here, first time being exposed to Deming, you see the power of that message and the impact it can have if we use it and get it out there. So we're committed to continuing to do that. And I wanted to just talk about a couple of our methods that we are using to get those that message out there and do it on an ever-increasing basis. One is uh, our social media. I wanted to mention a uh, gentleman in the back of the room, if he'd raise his hand, Trip Babbitt. Sorry, Trip didn't mean to uh, startle you there. <laughs> he was on Facebook. He was, was he, 
Is it liking us? Is that what he wants? Yeah, he's liking us right now. <laughs> um, for, ha have any of you heard the podcast that we do? Yeah. Trip runs those podcasts. If you haven't had a chance, it's a tremendous opportunity. A number of the speakers and people that are in this audience have done the podcast for us, and we're increasing that. It's a terrific way to get to know some of these people, to get to know the message, to get to learn and understand a little bit more, and have discourse with Trip back and forth about what you're hearing on those podcasts. Uh, the, uh, as we already talked about, we've got the Facebook side of it that we're working on with Judy, who runs that. We also have Twitter accounts. We have a, a, a lot of people ask about my grandfather's quotes. If you go to quotes.deming.org, we've put together a very cool site where you can actually see specific quotes that my grandfather's made, and then it will tie it back to where that quote came from. Page 22 of the New Economics, out of the crisis, to a particular article. So it's a fun way to see what those quotes are, and, and we're continually adding quotes to it. Pretty soon I think we'll have the whole book in there and just you know start uh, tying it back. Uh, but we also have a LinkedIn site, Twitter feed. Um, coming up in about a month or so, maybe less, is uh, we're going to unveil a new website that's a lot more interactive, has a lot more information capability on that, so that you can see where are some of the learning opportunities that are coming up. And we look forward to uh, unveiling that very, very soon. Um, a couple of the things I wanted to mention are the Deming Institute initiatives that we have. While we're trying to impact anybody that is interested in the Deming message. There isn't anybody in any private or public sector that we're not interested in having attend our conferences, our events, but as a smaller organization, we have to narrow some of that focus down to maximize that impact that we can make. So we have a couple of initiatives, one of which is an education initiative that David Langford is heading up, and we just went through an incredible cycle in Seattle where we went through a conference and several different seminars, and we had a uh, uh, impact on some folks who had never been to a Deming conference, never a Deming event before, who are now fully engaged with how this can help with the learning and with the students and create that quality learning environment, and not just about these kids taking tests and doing well on a test. And we're gonna continue to grow with that and work on it. We have a couple of new ideas to expand that out. Our two and a half day seminars, which focus, it can be for anybody, but it focuses on business and, and on executives. We've got one coming up October 25 through 27 in Dayton, Ohio, in partnership with Aileron, who a number of you know. Beth, where's Beth? There's Beth. Um, have worked with Aileron and know them uh, they've been partnering with us, and not only are we just doing these one-offs there, we're already having two more that are committed for 2017. And I think the room, Aileron's room only holds about 80, and we're starting to close in uh, on uh, 60 people, and we've still got about a month or so to go. So that one is starting to uh, go pretty quickly, but we will have more coming up in the, in the um, next uh, uh, year or so. The other one is uh, we have a focus on nonprofits, and I know a number of you brought up nonprofits. The nonprofits, oftentimes somebody comes in and they're so interested in having an impact in the community, making a difference in that community, and they get going and they have all this energy, and then as they start to move along with it, they begin to struggle with how do I keep this organization going? How do I think about this? I'm doing this sometimes part time. And so we're looking at, with Darlene's guidance and with Judy's guidance on how we can impact our communities. And we're running some small scale experiments in our hometown, Sun Valley, where we're working with some nonprofits that are having, helping to um, expand the influence of nonprofits throughout the community. And as we work with them, we're finding that they really take to this concepts. They believe that this can make a difference in their ability to be more efficient and effective with every single dollar coming in the door for them. And so if we can do that and have that impact on communities, then we've, we're helping a 
it's helping us achieve our aim as an organization, as an institute, which is very important to us. Uh, last couple things I wanted to mention are keep an eye out for our online learning program. We're almost finished with the first module of that, led by Kelly Allen. Kelly, are you in here? I saw you a minute ago. Um, we're almost finished with the first module of that, and we're looking at expanding that greatly over the next couple years, which will be a lot of fun because you can begin to point to, remember we talked about that square root. You can point to people, point people to this online learning so they can begin to get that, it, that awareness and curiosity stoked about this Deming philosophy and what it can mean, how it can impact you as an individual and how it can impact others as an individual. So we encourage you as we roll that out to not only watch it, but have others go to that and engage with that. The last thing that I wanted to mention was the, uh, you'll see in your agenda our conference schedule that we had, a conference scheduled in Salt Lake City in, at the end of March into April of 2017. Um, we're delaying that for a period of time. We don't know what the new dates are going to be at this point because we're trying to put together a combined conference and research seminar where people can come and present papers. So we want to make sure that we have that put together very well before we actually uh, um, go live with it. And so we'll get back to you with what the final dates are on that, but kind of change that in your calendar. So. Because uh, we don't quite know when it's going to when it's going to run yet. So what I'm going to do is finish with again thanking all of you uh, uh, for coming here. Look forward to seeing you again. And I'm going to play now this uh, small tribute that was put together by uh, Aquate. Thank you.